Niggas been knew that We just sent another up, not flame them up, that's a new pack Bet no niggas step to me, cause ain't no chance you make it back We be glad through the bitty, on the hunt for new I pass Niggas This man has just been told that his wife has been murdered. However, he never could have expected that it was his daughter that was responsible. What happened? Wife and daughter got into an argument. She's going to jail forever. Wife's dead. I lost two. On March 3rd, 2020, Ohio police responded to a 911 call at an address in Akron and found Brenda Powell on the floor of her kitchen with 30 stab wounds in her neck. Her daughter, Sydney, was in the house at the time and told police this was a home invasion turned brutal murder. But even 30 stab wounds? How could it, how could you fit 30 stabs on the neck? She should have cut her head off. No, I ain't even joking. I've been dead 30 stabs to the neck. Oh my lord, you could just cut Sydney was injured as well. Oh there were still questions left unanswered. Things weren't adding up for the cops. Brenda was on the phone with one of Sydney's college professors at the time she was attacked, and during that call, she suddenly started screaming before the phone went dead. When he called back, the voice on the other end of the phone claimed to be Brenda, oh, but the college professor knew this was a lie and suspected Sydney was pretending to be her mother. Fearing the worst, he called 911 and the first responders arrived in no time. This scream, combined with being called to the location, is enough probable cause for the police to forcefully enter the home. And this is what was waiting for him when he walked inside the house. Back of police! I don't know where that's in it. Acker Place! <laughs> bro, that's so sick. That's so sick. I can, I can like, like, you just, that's so sick, bro. Where's your mom at? <laughs> okay, stay right No! No, there's, there's so much blood. No, please! Man! Man! She looks like a 22. She looks like she's been down for a while. There's blood all over the place. There's a knife by her head and stuff like that. And there's a huge pool of blood. No, I think she just walked in on it. There's a broken window in the back. So if you can just put up some crime scene tape. As soon as AFD gets here, they're going to pronounce her, I'm sure. It turns out Brenda hasn't just been stabbed. She's also been hit over the head with an iron skillet. And her injuries are so devastating hey, that... I can't buy it. It's kind of like an LM man movie, low-key, like... Low key, and then they said she's still breathing. Ain't no way you let your mama suffer like that. Like, you were cold blooded. You need to spend your whole life in jail. Matter of fact, they need to, they need to get your ass to chill. Her life hangs in the balance. No! Stop! Stop! Hold on, we gotta figure out what's going on. Is she the Come on. Is she gonna be okay? Come on. Hello. Thank you. Come on, come on. You just need to cooperate with me, all right? Oh, I love my dad. Huh? I love my dad. What happened? What's going on? What's going on? We heard a bang. We heard a bang. She told me to get out. And then I heard screaming. So I came back and she was on the ground. Okay, you heard a bang. Don't even add up. Broken. What is your name? Sydney. Sydney, you going to jail. Are you cut? I don't think so. Yeah, you're cut. The truth is, behind closed doors, it be a became my See, secret sin at cook. age 10. Like and for the next summer. I don't think so. Yeah, your hand. No, I was helping her. I grabbed her. All right, stop. I grabbed the knife. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. We just got dad. The dad. Okay, Sydney. What's... I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Daddy! 
Sydney appears to have been injured as well, is suffering from shock and struggling to hold herself together. Even the arrival of her father, Steve Powell, doesn't calm Sydney down. Police need to lock down the crime scene and try to figure out exactly what's happened. Inside the house, there's a broken window and the knife used to stab Brenda, but something isn't quite right, as the broken window had blood dripped on the outside of it, leading police to conclude it could have only been broken after Brenda had been stabbed. However, Sydney claimed that the intruder used the window to enter and was broken before the attack, leading to the first of many inaccuracies in her story. Interesting. Okay, do we know who, where, which way? This younger guy. I'm looking through here and I can see pictures. And there's a whole basement set up for what looks like. Yep, hey, sorry, I'll call you right, I'll call you right back. Bye. Alright, let me go report that. Yeah, there's guys in the mail. It's probably her brother. Well, see if we can find out who who else lives here. With such a serious case with so many unanswered questions, the cops spend some time talking with homeowners nearby. They have to try and collect as much information as possible. But right now, the only person making any sense is Sydney's father. Okay. Do you live here, sir? Yeah. Okay. That's my wife and there's my daughter. I, I, okay. How old's your daughter? I, she'll be 20 in March. She's 19 okay. years old. Is she coming out? Yeah. Not, no, not yet, sir. Just can't hang out. Sydney. Can you tell me what happened? Huh? Sydney. Sydney. On his way? Yeah, it's coming. On his way. Yeah, that's him right here. I can hear him. While trying to piece this puzzle together, police speak to Steve Powell. Sit down. Sit down. I'm just now getting up. Damn. And one of Sydney's friends down at the station, in the hopes that they may be able to help them shed some light on exactly what happened. But unfortunately for Steve, he has absolutely no idea Sydney is the attacker, or even worse, that his wife is in critical condition at the hospital and likely won't survive. Something detectives will have to break to him sooner than later. Who did you get a call from? Yeah. Got a call from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> He said there was a call, went out, a distress call from the University of Mountain Union where my daughter was going and said, uh, female in distress. I said, well, that's funny because Brenda's there, my wife. So I called Brenda and it rings and rings on the cell phone. No yeah. answer. I called Sydney back. Rings and rings and rings. No answer. I called Brenda back. Ring, ring, ring. No answer. I'm pacing around. I called Chief back and because I'm on the phone with him telling him there's no answer. My daughter called and said, oh, mom's on the phone with me, with uh, Mount Union. I said, well, cops are on the way. And she went, there was just a break in. And there's, and she just started going off. She said, what? She said, was, there's been somebody broke into the house. There's blood everywhere. And she was hysterical and crying. So at first, when you talked to her, she said, your wife was on the phone with Mount Union. Yes. And as, soon as, and as soon as I said, cops are on the way, the hysterics started. Is she still attending? Well, as far as we knew up until today, yes, but apparently not for the last, I don't know, maybe couple weeks. What Sydney hadn't told her parents was that she'd been kicked out of college weeks before this happened and had been lying to them ever since. But she did tell her friends, including Lauren, who lived in the same dorm. Now, we understand that, that Sydney was your roommate at Mount Union? Yes, she was last year and this year. And so you've been friends ever since your soft freshman year at St. B? Mm hmm Go over each other's houses, everything, everything like that? Yep. And... Well, she started off in exercise science freshman year, her first semester, but then she didn't like the classes, so she switched over to psychology and sociology, but then she didn't really like that, so... Yeah, we gotta know why she did this. I gotta know. We gotta know. I don't know why. This year she switched to... Education 
vacation and then she didn't like that either and that's one of the reasons she left is because she really couldn't find what she liked. I think she struggled in her classes. I don't think her grades were the best, but she didn't really tell me that because um, I wasn't really struggling. I think she kept a lot of stuff hidden because when we were just talking or with our friends, she always seemed happy. Like she seemed okay, like I said, I couldn't tell until the end where she was kind of just like struggling and she kind of was sad and just like, Lauren, I don't know what to do. I think she felt like everybody around her kind of had figured out what they wanted to do and she had it. Establishing Sydney's state of mind leading up to the incident will help detectives find out if she simply snapped or if this was premeditated. The issue is, Sydney is going to claim that she actually has no idea what happened throughout this entire case. In fact, she's going to base her entire defense on the fact that she blacked out and even claim insanity using this. This means the cops still have no solid proof that Sydney is the guilty party, but they're starting to discover she was hiding secrets from just about everyone. Well, I know she's hiding by for a while, but I don't think, I think those last, like this last semester, she started coming back in January, when it really started, that she was kind of more like upset because she really didn't know what she wanted to do. My friends and I were worried for her because we were just, we didn't know what was going on because she didn't tell us and like, Lauren knew something was wrong and tried to help. At first, she had no reason to doubt her and was as supportive as any friend could have been at a time like this. But even Lauren grew suspicious of Sydney's evasive behavior. I could tell she was getting more upset and like more sad. And I told her, like, I'm here. Like, you can tell me I'm here for you. If you need anything, I'm here. But she never really opened up until she was leaving and saying that she was struggling with school and that she wanted, she was kind of trying to figure out what was going on, and that's when I started to try to help her. Let's talk about this. Um, you know, you're her best friend, and I know this is difficult, but to tell us about her relationship with her parents. Her and her parents had a really good relationship. Like, her mom and her were best friends, probably. Like, they did everything together. Like, one of the reasons she went... We got another ad. I don't believe it. Ain't no way that best friend she done did that to her almost to be with her mom. They were always close. She never said anything bad about her mom. She never ever talked about having an argument with her mom. Like, I can't recall every time she'd be going home, she's like, I can't wait to see my mom. Or when she goes home for weekends, she's like, oh, my mom wants me to come home so we can hang out and like watch movies. And she loved, like, she loved being home. By this point, Sydney is becoming wrapped up in a lie that she's going to struggle to escape from. But instead of owning up, she decided to make out as if college just wasn't working out for her and tried to convince her parents that they could save a lot of money on college bills if she left to pursue other things. What's going on? Are you not going to school? She goes, I'm overwhelmed in school and I don't really like what I'm doing and it seems like it's a waste of my time and your money. I said, well, but that's all part of it. Nobody's going to tell you you need to do what you're doing when you're 20. You need to figure it out. But that's not what she told her friends. So when she's talking to you about, um, you know, the problems she's having at school, uh, did she mention that she tried talking to her parents? Yeah, I know she definitely, especially when she left, she talked to her mom about leaving. They kind of made that decision together to leave Mount. Like she told them that. Lauren's suspicions were proved to be right, and Sydney was lying to her friends. But at the same time, she was also lying to her parents, who knew nothing of her problems at college until they received a phone call from Sydney's professor. So Steve and Brenda began crisis talks to find out exactly what was going on with their daughter. So I went back, I called my wife and called my daughter's phone. She picks up, she was working down in children's, and she goes, What's wrong? And I basically told her, I said, You know, I mean, Sydney, I, I think the reason we can't get on is because I had. She's on enrolled. She hasn't been going to school. Sydney became wrapped up in two sets of lies. The story she told her friends and the story she told her parents. Failing grades aren't the end of the world, and any parent would support their child through such difficult times. But it seems she thought her parents would be mad and couldn't bring herself to tell them she'd been asked to leave the college. People be trying to assume the next person feelings. You won't know until you actually tell somebody. You won't know until you go with to towards the person with the info or whatever you're trying to tell them stop trying to assume what somebody gonna feel you don't know what somebody gonna feel till you tell them you're really like dead ass like i don't like people do that like you won't know how you won't know how my reaction gonna be to you tell me like what, what the hell like that's what we fucking people love you can't be assuming shit all the time
bitch. Yeah, we asked what she was doing and she said she was good. And, like, she acted like what we would see as normal. Like, she was laughing, she was having fun. She said she got jobs because she worked at the Akron Rubber Ducks. She's worked there for a couple seasons, so she was going to go back there. And then she also said she was looking for another job and, like, everything was good. And she was trying to figure out, like, for next year and all this stuff. And she was going to talk to her parents about housing. Trying to come back to Mount. Once you got to my union or anytime, I actually did. Uh, did Cindy ever drink alcohol at all, or she did? Mm-hmm. Okay, just kind of describe that for us. She liked to drink. Um, there was an incident in the fall of our freshman year where she drank too much, and she wasn't alcohol poisoned, but she did end up in the hospital. Her mom came and got her at like two in the morning. Usually yeah, after that, her and I were together, and she did drink. I usually kind of like slow her down after I'm um, kind of her limit because she's small. Detectives suspect Sydney snapped when Brenda was on the phone to her college professor and tried to cover up her lies by silencing her mother forever. The issue is, again, Sydney is claiming that she doesn't remember a thing, but it seems that she made some crucial and careless mistakes that let the detectives pick up the pieces. I know you did not kill your mom because you didn't want them to find out you wasn't in college. Yeah. Sydney grabbed an iron skillet and beat her mother into submission before plunging a steak knife into her neck over 30 times. She then impersonated her mother on the phone and staged a break in to try and cover her tracks. I made it in far enough to see the back fin. There's, when you go into the front door, you come around the kitchen, you go in, you can see the, there's like a pass through between the kitchen and the family room. From the back of the house, I could see in the right hand, there's two big sliding windows. I could see that window was clearly, it looked like it was busted. Went down the hallway probably about two feet, just didn't see blood all the way down the hallway. Sadly, Brenda didn't survive her ordeal and passed away in hospital. The county medical examiner came to the conclusion that Brenda had died from blunt force trauma to her head and stab wounds to her neck. They ruled her death a homicide. This left detectives to deliver the tragic news to Steve that his wife was dead. Well, really bad news. Your wife passed away. Yeah, she was a Detectives investigated Sydney's claims that an intruder was responsible, but their findings didn't seem to match her story, and the evidence was painting a different picture altogether. This left detectives with one final devastating task to carry out, telling Steve that his own daughter killed his wife. What happened? I don't think someone broke into the house. I don't know if your wife and daughter got into an argument, got physical. I mean, the window was broken, but there's no forced entry into the house. They tell them all that at one time. Can y'all imagine that? They tell them tell them all that at one time. Mm. Did your wife and daughter ever have like really heated? No. I mean, it's not. <laughs> this is not possible. <laughs> your son's outside. He doesn't want you. My son's here. Yes. Would you like one of us to just go be with your son? I, I don't know. It's simply impossible to imagine the turmoil Steve must be going through at this moment. His wife murdered and his daughter the main suspect. Finally, Steve realizes that detectives might be right, leaving him to deliver the news to his son. Clearly they think Sydney did this. I lost two. She's going to jail forever. Wife's dead. You know, they're going to do everything they can to make sure that they find out exactly what happened. Nothing's definite as of yet. They still have to do their investigating. And where's Andrew? Is he just sitting out there by himself? Or is he with. Well, yeah, I don't want anybody in here with me. Yeah, okay. I don't want anybody else with me in here. I'm not going to have the best legal. I don't care. You don't want any of your guys? I don't want any of you. No, I just want Andrew. Okay. You should be coming at us on your way, okay? Okay. You don't want anyone? I don't want you. They don't know. They haven't told me. 
Get investigated. Sydney was arrested and charged for the murder of Brenda Powell. She claimed insanity at first, saying she had almost no memory of what happened, including hitting Brenda with the cast iron skillet and fatally stabbing her. The jury didn't believe Sydney, and she was found guilty on two counts of murder, one count of felonious assault, and one count of tampering with evidence. Sydney Powell was sentenced to life in prison with a chance of parole after 15 That's years. 15. Imagine making $453,000 in a single. You kidding, right? But I wanted to tell y'all something, bruh. As long as you able to wake up the next morning and see the sun, like, don't give up, bruh. Don't crash out like she just did. Especially not on your own people, bruh. That's so... Mm, that made me want to go beat her ass. Go turn to the transgender, go to jail, whoop her ass. Like, really, like... That was nothing. That was way too much, like... You took your mama away. You crashed your brother life, your daddy life, your own life. Well, not really, because you 20, you get 15 years, you're going to be 35 and get parole. What the fuck? That's not fair at all. That's not fair at all, but, hey, shit, a life on life, good and bad shit going to happen. This band knew that We just sent the nut up Now flame them up That's a new pack Band no niggas step to me Cause ain't no chance You make it back We be gliding through the bitty On the hunt for new I pass Niggas